Hey YouTube, so in today's video we're going to take a look at some rendering times with my current PC, so an 8700K and an RTX 2060 to see what kind of performance we get when it comes to Blender rendering. So I put this together, um, just a quick uh, donut, so I followed Blender Guru's tutorial on YouTube, which I will link in the description below. Um, but it was, wasn't too bad, it was pretty easy. So we created a torus, added some icing by actually duplicating the top layer of the donut and extruding it up a little bit and then adding some sprinkles using particles and then we added the material you know texture color all that and added a, a ground plane and then we also have our lighting and our camera so when we go to our camera view we can this is sort of what we're actually going to be extruding and then we look at our rendered view this is sort of the shadows how the light bounces off of the object but just to explain a little bit, um, so over here in our panel, we have our rendering panel. So we moved from EV to Cycles for our render engine, uh, just because it does give you a much crisper, um, better image. And we also turned on denoising. Uh, so if we go into layers, we actually turned on denoising to actually denoise the render after it's completed. So if you look at our rendering, we have the option for GPU compute and CPU. So right now it's on GPU compute, and in the viewport itself, so when you turn on render mode, we're, we're rendering it at, uh, at 32 times. Uh, so it's 32 render, uh, 32 render squares or whatever you want to call it that are rendering out this image. And then when we go to a full render, when we actually render the image, we're then using 128. Um, so GPUs are much better when it comes to rendering 3D images, rendering images themselves. Plus we have the ray tracing with the RTX card um, in order to actually sort of get more impact of that light bouncing around the object. And if we go to our preferences, we can go into system and we have CUDA, OptX, none. So CUDA, we're using our GeForce RTX 2060, and then we can also use the CPU. So we're looking at rendering with our GPU. If you were to look at something similar to Blender like Cinebench, you have your one processing core for your GPU, whereas with our S780-700K, we'll have 12 uh, rendering um, objects as the, the S780-700K has 12 threads. So if we actually go and render this, so first I'm gonna use CPU, and right now we're in render mode, so we're gonna to have to re-render uh, those 32 objects with our CPU. So you can see it in the top left corner of the screen, path rate example, 19 out of 32, so that's what it's completed, and it's just rendering the scene as it sits right now. If we then go to our camera view, it'll render again at this view. So every time you move your object within your viewport, it will have to re-render if you are in render mode. And you might be able to hear the pump start to kick on. We have an NZXT Kraken X62 cooler in there, and as it's rendering, that CPU is getting up to 100% usage constantly, so it's got to keep it cool. So right now, we'll run our quick render. See what the timing is with 8700K. Also overlay um, NZXT cam just to show our CPU and GPU usage during this. So I'll go ahead, start the render. And here is cam, just so you can see it. So we're sitting at 100% load constantly. I've also overclocked 8700K just using ASUS multi-core enhancement to 4.7 on all cores. So as you can see, we're using 100% of the CPU, 94% from Blender itself. And from temps, we're only we're still sitting at 61 degrees. So with the X62 Kraken, we have plenty of cooling. So it's looking pretty good. And we're also, with that denoising feature, as you see it rendering, you can see a lot of noise. So let's say looking at the top half of the donut, you can see sort of those it blotchy, you can see all the pixelation that's going on. So after it renders the first time through, then you'll have some processing nodes go back 
and re-render and denoise um, where there is noise on the image. So I figured I used the donut just because it's quick. It's pretty easy to render for the system. The only thing that's really rendering is the donut itself and the background, the plane that it's sitting on. Very easy for the system to render and denoise. So as you can see, you can see your 12 nodes um, that are actually processing the render. From the 8700K, once we switch over to the RTX 2060, it'll only be one node, and that one will just do all the rendering for you. So we're already at a minute and a half. So if you were to use something like a newer AMD processor with, you know, like a 3900 with 12 cores, 24 threads, or 3950 with 16 cores, you're going to see definitely an increase in performance here. But we are sitting at 6 cores, 12 threads, um, at 4.7, so it should be decently quick with our 8700K, but yeah, like a 9900K, all those CPUs are going to give you much better performance. But then if you switch over from a CPU to a GPU when you're doing your rendering, you're just going to see an increase there as well. So with an 8700K, it's sort of, I would say, lower end of the upper tier of newer CPUs. So with your 8700K, your 9900K, 9700K, and then on the AMD side, like I just mentioned, 3900X, 3950X, you're sitting at the lower end of those with six cores and 12 threads, so it's not going to be as fast as some of the newer CPUs that are out there. But if you do have a newer graphics card, then you can definitely take advantage of that. And even an older graphics card, so a 2060, isn't it's the newer it's the most recent version outside of the super version um, but it is still the lower end of NVIDIA cards so yes we're getting the higher CUDA count than previous generation when it comes to the 1060 or the 1070 but we should see much better um, times when it comes to actually rendering so now we're just gonna close out of this and we're gonna switch over to GPU compute so now to re-render using the GPU what's in our viewport are 32 nodes and then we'll actually render it and see what kind of times we get. I would expect it to be about a minute and a half. So it's about, it's like 50% quicker, 30% quicker. Um, so if we looked at the last one, it was two minutes. If we go to a minute and a half, it's like, it's rather quick, 75% quicker. So now that we're rendered in the viewport, we can actually render the actual image. And then when we go to render, I'll bring up cam. So again, we're still not even using the full RTX 2060 while rendering. We're only using 39% of it um, using that CUDA acceleration. You can see our temps are getting up to 53, 54. We're just sitting in an open chassis. Um, with the base cooling from the uh, RTX Founders Edition card of the 2060. Clock speed at 1890, so this isn't even overclocked or anything like that. This is just base RTX 2060 Founders Edition. But as you can see, you only have one processing node instead of 12, and it's also doing the same thing. It's rendering its first pass, going back rather quickly, and then denoising the previous passes. Move this so you guys can see the time. So the last one was 2 minutes and 3 seconds. Now we're sitting at 55, halfway rendered with the donut. But I mean, from a utilization perspective, we're only using 14% of our CPU instead of 100% all rendering. And that CUDA acceleration, it's still not even using the full RTX 2060. It's only using 40% of it. And we're keeping temperatures a lot cooler. So if we can sort of push much more of the load onto the RTX card, rather than keeping it on the CPU, we should be able to see you know, higher performance and then longevity out of the system. So we're getting up there in time. It's probably going to be rather similar, but as you can see, the load on the system itself is a lot lower. So we saved a little bit of time, 
went from 2 minutes and 3 seconds to a minute 57. So it wasn't as large of a decrease as I thought it was going to be, but we are seeing improvements in timing. And if you scale that up to, you know, much larger um, renders, then you're going to see that larger performance increase, even though it might be the similar percentage, maybe it's 4 or 5% faster, you're still going to then see, you know, minutes or 30 seconds when it comes to larger renders that are normally going to take you like 20 minutes to render. So this was just a quick example of you know, GPU computing versus CPU computing when it does come to rendering, specifically with Blender. And I thought this would be a fun example just using the, the donut. Um, so yeah, if you guys like more of these videos where we're actually going more into details of you know CPU and GPU performance when it comes to different applications, um, different softwares, then you know comment below, like the video. And if you want to see some different things with Blender, some different animations, stuff like that, also comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video.